The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, of all of the uh, challenging gospel passages that, that we've heard recently, uh, we can think of Jesus' uh, words of condemnation to the towns that had not repented, although they had seen uh, his works. I mean, this is uh, seemingly on the opposite side of the spectrum, except it's, it's a challenge for us as well. It's a challenge for us because I think that um, our, uh, our lived experience of, of Christianity doesn't align here with Jesus' words. And it needs to. That's the that's the challenge. I mean, that's I don't know. That's the entirety of my homily. That's uh, that's <laughs> that's the challenge. Is line up your life with this. You know, line up your life, line up your life with Jesus. Right? Can we can we say that this is this is our relationship with Jesus? Can we say this is our this is our practice of the Catholic faith? Is it is our li- is is our life a uh, a light burdened or an easy yoked life? Or do, we, or do we see it some other way? And it, it's, I mean, it goes, of course, uh, the, uh, this, this passage is connected uh, to, the, to the previous passage where Jesus is talking about God uh, revealing himself uh, not to the, to the wise and learned, but to the childlike. And this is then, I, I suppose we could say, uh, this, is, this is the effect, right? This is the fruit of that particular tree. If we were to see the living and true God revealed in and as Jesus of Nazareth and come to come to know him and and, uh, come to know him to love him to serve him come to know him in the way that he desires for us to know him uh, then if that's all going right then we will be living the the light burdened and the easy yoked life Uh, the where does this where does this come from though right because I mean uh, of course you know we we've seen I don't know, perhaps a chapter or so ago, we've seen Jesus say, you know, whoever loves, um, how did he say it? Who, I don't want to, because I want to get the relationships wrong, but it was whoever loves this person or that person more than me is not worthy of me, right? That was, very, that was just a little while ago, and now he's talking about uh, the light burden and the easy yoke. And the, the, how is that resolved it's, it's all resolved in, this, in the same way. It's, it's all resolved in Jesus-centeredness. Right? So it's all part of the same puzzle. We have to put Jesus first. And it's only by, it's only by Jesus being first. And how do we say? Absolutely first? Because right? we like to play these games with ourselves, right? And so we, so we say, okay, yeah, Jesus is first in this part of my life. <laughs> and, uh, something else is, so, you know, like in the realm of baseball, the Yankees are first. And in the realm of, you know, what, and it's like, yeah, no, that doesn't, that's not exactly right. Even in the realm of baseball, Jesus is first. What, what on earth does that mean? You know, what a, what, I mean, we have, we, have to, we have to figure out what that means. In the realm of baseball, I don't know. I don't really want to talk about baseball, but in, the, I, I don't, I'm over baseball. But in the, baseball, I don't know, it's like, you know, do, do you rise and fall with your fandom of that particular team, right? Like, what's the most important thing? And it, is, so is Jesus first there? Like, is Jesus uh, shaping how it is you are a fan of your team? You know, fan is short for fanatic, right? It's like, we're talking about religions in a sense, right? But is Jesus first in that religion as well? Does, does Jesus shape how you support, quote unquote, how you support your team or... Or does he not? And if he doesn't, you've got a problem. And, and you've got a problem in the sense that your burden is, is heavier. Right? You, you're, not living, you're not living then the light, the light burdened life. Your, your yoke is harder because it's not, cause it, cause you're not living out this Jesus, Jesus-centered life. And, it's, and it's, I don't, there's, more to it, there's more to it than that because that, I think that makes it sound like 
the burden is on us to live a Jesus-centered life. And if we do that, then, the, then that accomplishment will give us this, um, this light burden and easy yoke. It's, that's not exactly right. It's not exactly right. It's, it's close, and that's what we should be, that's what we should be pushing for. That's, that is our side of the equation. But the other side of the equation is, I don't know, this is an unbalanced equation. I'm not doing well with analogies this morning. Okay, so G- Jesus, the other side of the equation is Jesus and his action. He's the one taking initiative. He's the one calling us. He's the one summoning us. And what is he summoning us to do? He's summoning us to share his life. That's why the yoke is easy and the burden is light, because Jesus is living it. And Jesus is living it in us and through us. So I would say I have a pretty light lift at the end of the day, right? I don't have to bear the burden myself because Jesus is bearing the burden. So there's a, so there's a reorientation, and I, I have to do a kind of have. If you don't hear it, what I'm trying to do is line this up with, um, with the Lord's Prayer because that's what's, that's what's going on here. I mean, Jesus' whole life and his whole life of mission is uh, represented I don't know, perfectly in the Lord's Prayer. So you see this, the sense is, okay, God, God-centeredness, our giving ourselves over to God to live for His purposes, right? Our desire to make His name holy, right? In the sense of to make His name revered, uh, known to be holy and the rest. We're living uh, in, his, in His service. We're giving ourselves totally to um, the building up of His kingdom, on earth as it is in heaven, that's accomplished by giving ourselves over to, to, to doing His will, His will, by the way, that is, that is love alone. This is it. This is, all, this is our God-centeredness. And then uh, g- committing ourselves totally to God and His purposes, we, we find, precisely because we've been summoned to that, and Jesus has called us to it, that He is enlivening us for those purposes. Right? He, he's giving us our daily bread. He's giving us what we need today to live in God's service. But I, it, it's not, I'm making it, I'm, I'm, I'm making it too, um, I don't know how to say it. I'm making it too transactional, even as I'm, as I'm trying not to. Like, okay, we'll commit to it, God, and then you give us the stuff that we need to do. Okay, yeah, it is, that is going to happen, but more, more. Because, I mean, what can we do to, to deserve a share in God's life? What can, we do to, to, what can we do to earn the love of God that is poured out on us in abundance by Christ, by God's sending of His Spirit to live in us and work through us? We can't. Right? So the, the gift that we receive... Uh, easily overwhelms the effort that we're putting in. Again, it's the, it's the light burden and it's the easy yoke. Right, so that, that's what it is. The, it's, it's an uneven exchange. It's an exchange. It's an exchange of persons. It's not, a, it's not this kind of contractual obligations and the rest. It's an exchange of persons. This exchange of persons in which we, we are easily the, benef- the, I mean, easily the beneficiaries, uh, beyond, our, beyond our imagining what's being given to us. And this is, this, is, this is just part, and I, I, can't, you know, I can't do it justice, but um, this, is, this is all uh, part of the life that we, that we have in Christ. If you want more, you have to read St. Bonaventure. Do you know, this, is my, this is my tip of the hat to the, to the saint that we celebrate today, because this is what, this is what drives St. Bonaventure. You see this, the, the love of God. I mean, this is, this is it. A, a, a contemporary and a good friend of St. Thomas Aquinas, who takes almost a completely different course as he does. And, uh, and I don't know, St. Bonaventure is a better, um, a better commentary on the scriptures, on this particular gospel passage, than anyone could ever expound. So that's my, uh, that's my prompt for today. St. Bonaventure, go and read him. But, in, but in, the, in the meantime, read him, read him in your leisure, because, of course, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. And what do, I mean by, what do I mean by leisure? I mean our active participation in the life of Christ Jesus. He lived, he lived a life that was full of praise and thanksgiving for Almighty God. You remember the night before that, he, the night before he goes to his death, what does he do? He gives thanks. He gives thanks to Almighty God, Jesus. 
He knows his death is on the horizon, and, he's, and his life is still full of thanksgiving. And with his life at work in us and working through us, how can our life not be a life of thanksgiving to God? No matter what, no matter what today has brought, no matter what we're facing right now, no matter what is on the horizon for tomorrow. And that's, that's the life that we're called to share, a life of praise, thanksgiving to Almighty God, and a life lived in, in service, given away totally to God and for His purposes, lives of, lives of great love that, that the saints have shown us, right? How to, how to live, how to walk, and, and all the rest.